Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Sigurds, and this time we're joined by Derek Binder and Ash Paulson to discuss the announcement that a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie is on the way. So let's get started. Alright, guys, so this comes to us from the latest Edge magazine that apparently a bunch of ex Rare staffers, well, specifically six of them right now, uh, are working on a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie, um, or a game, you know, very much in the same vein as that game. So the company is called Platonic Games. And uh, they are in the very early stages of making this, and they've only released a single image so far, or really, I mean, concept art in this case, I guess, showcasing a bunch of leaves and a couple of characters hiding among them. Um, so you can see two pairs of eyes, and really, that's about it. So, uh, I figured we'd get our start off with, of course, our gut reactions to uh, hearing this news. So what do you guys think about this? Well, it's always great to hear that uh, people that you know do great work are getting back together and are attempting something new and different. And yeah, it's not the same character, but it's the same sort of line that, like, with Mighty Number no. 9, where it's got the same people that worked on Mega Man doing a brand new uh, spiritual successor and trying to recapture that magic for fans who miss that kind of thing. And that's the same thing here. So I have a feeling this is going to be a kind of a big deal whenever it finally does come out because. I mean, it's hard to exactly say how it's going to do, but looking at who's working on it, I can't help but be excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. Uh, I mean, as you guys know, I love Banjo-Kazooie, and I'm always going to want a new, you know, actual Banjo-Kazooie game, but I will certainly take a new game from its creators as well, uh, starring new characters, and, you know, as we can see from the teaser image here, it looks like it's already pretty similar thematically. Just for, for, you know, from the very onset. So, yeah. Uh, and, and Grant Kirkhope is allegedly doing the music, maybe, and that is just as important to me. So, yeah, I'm on board. Yeah, I mean, anything that resembles Banjo-Kazooie to me is awesome. <laughs> because I love <laughs> yeah. I love that game. And I said before, even Banjo-Tooie has grown on me over the years. Like, replaying it, I liked it more than I did initially. So, in this case, the timing is a little bit interesting, because we do know that... Microsoft is updating, or Microsoft and Rare are also bringing back a classic IP, uh, which we've talked about before, you know, as, and we theorize it could be, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, or it could be uh, Battletoads, among, you know, several other games. But w what if both of these are coming out at the same time, and you know, one actually is Banjo-Kazooie, and another is a game just like Banjo-Kazooie? <laughs> then we win. <laughs> I think that, that really <laughs> is. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. What I find interesting is, like, who we got as part of this team... Uh, they said they don't. I don't think they named any names, but uh, they did mention that in their little blurb on the Platonic Games uh, website, uh, they got the guy who programmed Donkey Kong Country, the character designer behind Banjo Kazooie, specifically those two characters, and the artist who made your console fit the burst with lavish environments across a decade's worth of adventure games. So that's a great start right there. Uh, there's already like Grant Kirkhope's been Grant. Uh, dropping hints all over the place saying he's working on something new one of his most recent tw uh, tweets is trying to write something that sounds like stuff i've written before without it sounding like stuff i've written before <sighs> that pretty much says it all yeah yeah exactly yeah. there are trying to capture that spirit here they brought in a lot of their classic people even though i don't know any specific names offhand i love platformers so much i don't have much as much of a history with banjo kazooie as you guys do but i love platformers and i cannot wait to try this out because you know it, it, something along those classic 3D lines, uh, I'm, you know, I'm down to try out. Well, I guess, I mean, that's the thing. When you say you like platformers, are you talking about 2D platformers or 3D platformers? Because... Both. Okay, because, yeah, this is a pretty, you know, it, it does play very differently in that... Um, I mean, Banjo kazooie I would say it's more of a slower-paced platformer, like, in that there's really not that much platforming. It's more of... It's almost more of like an exploration or almost advent not an adventure game, but you know what I mean, right? I mean, it, it, it is pretty deliberate, but I would say yeah. there is a lot of platforming in there. I mean, there are some there are some areas like Rusty Bucket Bay where if you miss a platform, you have to start them from the very beginning of the level. I mean, I would say the platforming focus is pretty heavy, but it is a slow paced game, and that it's not you know it's not you know it's not fast paced crazy platforming like say Super Meat Boy, 
But there is a lot of 3D platforming like Super Mario 64. There is, but I, I don't know. I consider it like a different tier than Mario 64. Like that game, I, I think Banjo-Kazooie's pacing is just much more deliberate. Sure and it is. That's uh, why yeah. it feels, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it is definitely still a platformer. But I mean, really, what it, my, my point is what I'm getting at. It's more of a, you know, what, what do people call them? A collect-a-thon, basically? Oh, it's definitely a collect-a-thon. And that genre has been basically dead for a while. Right. Um, with very, you know, there have been a couple of games, a couple of like indie games that have tried to replicate that in the years since. So I don't know. Do you think that will be an issue though, considering that that genre has basically died, and this game is, you know, an update in that same vein? Well, has it died because of people not wanting to play those types of games anymore? Has it died because people just don't make those games anymore? I mean, there's a shift, and then all the studios were like, okay, let's get away from that because maybe it's not selling as well. But you still, ha- I think there's still love for that series. I mean. If, you know, look at people's reactions to Nuts and Bolts. It wasn't a collect-a-thon. The game, I saw people get upset that they made fun of the fact that the previous games were collect-a-thons. Mm-hmm. And so there's still plenty of people who like that. And the, the problem, it's not so much the fact that a collect-a-thon is bad. It's make, giving a purpose to collecting those items. As long as they do that, I don't see anybody having a problem with it. At least I won't. Well, yeah, it depends how they do it. Because I mean, one of the complaints about Banjo-Tooie, actually, was that there was just too much to, to collect. Um, there was a ridiculous amount of stuff in that game to grab. It, it's weird breaking it down because, like, there have been other games that have a ton of collectibles as well. I think in Banjo Tooie's case, it was more that it was they had a ton of collectibles spread across like 20 different things to collect, or however many it was. Like, there was too many different types of things to grab. Um, I think simplifying that, like the range of Banjo Kazooie did, might be one way of I don't know, might make that less of an issue. I don't know if it is an issue. I guess it's it's hard to tell because there've been so few games recently in this. In the style. Well, I, I think ironically, I mean, Rare, who made the best collectathons, might also be, you know, might also have been responsible for the the genre getting kind of long in the tooth. I mean, I definitely see what you're saying about Banjo Tooie. I I don't think it was quite that big an issue until actually Donkey Kong 64, which I think might have single handedly really soured a lot of people. Well, that game was the not good. Collectathon thing. Well, <laughs> yeah. Aside from the game not being as good as the Banjo games, I mean, if we're talking about have too many things to collect. Yeah. That game is the definition of too many things to collect. So I think after Donkey Kong 64, that that was I think the last really notable high-profile 3D platformer collectathon game we ever saw. You know that that's kind of when the series dropped or when the front of the genre dropped off, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and no, I think you're right. I mean, part of the problem in that case was that they had you know there were five different characters and each one had their own unique set of collectibles. <laughs> exactly, which is just insane. It is insane. So yeah, that definitely is kind of I think. <laughs> would partially kill that genre. So in this case though, going off the concept art and what we know of the game being Banjo-Kazooie, you know, you're only going to have that that core set of two characters. And the concept art here, you know, shows very little about them in that we can see literally they have two set, you know, a set of eyes each. <laughs> that's that's right. as far as we know. But I was playing around the Photoshop trying to, you know, enhance the image a little bit. And we can actually see, we can pull a little bit more out of here actually. With the lower character, we can see like there's like this ridge around his eye, and to me it almost looks like he's a type of reptile. Actually, it reminded me more of he looks very much to me like um going again just off what little we can see. He lo- his face looks like one of the dragons from um, How to Train Your Dragon to me. Oh yeah, I can see that. And then mm-hmm. uh, the character behind him appears to have a beak, which again ties into the whole Banjo Kazooie thing, and it almost looks like to me like a penguin or something. So I don't know. Like to me, looking at this, it could be like a dragon or crocodile. I guess a wall dragon would make sense if it's a bird behind him, like a, cro- a crocodile and maybe a penguin. But a penguin can't really fly, so... <laughs> Going off that idea, I mean, I definitely agree that we definitely got something with a beak and it's a bit of a fatter beak. So I think of it like one more th- one of more of those uh, squat-looking birds. Yeah. And I was thinking more along the lines of dinosaur, but you saying about alligator sort of struck a memory with me, I guess, in that there are alligators out in the world that just have birds hang out on their back and like help them pick up food and collect stuff and just sort of hang out around there so maybe that's where they're drawing the inspiration from of having some sort of alligator creature and a bird creature teaming up to help each other out in some some ways yeah i'm getting alligator vibe too from the from the primary character but i'm actually getting more of a parrot or like toucan vibe from the bird looking character 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I don't, I'm not quite getting a penguin vibe, but I could see like this being like a cartoony toucan or something like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, actually, then this really means nothing. But what this actually reminds me of, randomly enough, is the uh, original Sonic the Hedgehog three box art, where you can see uh, a pair of eyes, which are Knuckles' eyes, in the bushes. Yeah, I was actually thinking the same thing because Sonic 3's box art is so iconic with Knuckles hanging on the background, like, "Oh, who's that character?" So yeah. I, I do get that vibe too. I don't think there's going to be any relation to it. Oh, of course, whatsoever. Not. Uh, do you think we can pull out anything from its codename, which is Project Ukulele? I mean, it tells me that music's going to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> and Banjo Kazooie was also named after that. I mean, they, you know, it's a they, banjo had a banjo. And uh, Kazooie had a kazoo. Honestly, if, if we get kind of a more uh, kind of a musical motif again, like Banjo Kazooie had, and the main character plays a ukulele, I think that's super cool. It's very brazen in its inspiration, and you know it, it's pretty ballsy, but I think it's awesome. So I'm looking at this some more, and uh, I'm, I also can't help but wonder, like the artwork for the lower character looks a little bit to me also like he could be like a frog or something. Sure, yeah, I could see that definitely. I mean, that would be a little bit interesting because in Banjo Kazooie. I mean, the idea was, you know, Banjo wasn't very mobile by himself, but he was the one you'd be attacking with most of the time. Whereas Kazooie was, you know, you switched to her form, basically, when you wanted to move around quicker or fly or whatever. So if it is a frog, though, that'd be, that'd be interesting, because that would imply, like, he could jump really high, but then maybe, you, you know, use a bird for, you know, I guess, continue, you know, flight or getting a, maybe distance or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what they could do with that, so... Yeah, I mean, it could even be a turtle. Feel bad for that bird trying to lift the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. I, I think we're pretty much all agreed on, on on the idea that the primary character is some sort of amphibian or reptile. But then there's the fact he's hiding in a bush. Do you think that tells us any more? Uh, people are going to you know, get... People, I can already see the comments, but I was like overanalyzing this already. Sure. But <laughs> it's what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, do you think it's more of a, uh, like, is this like a forest or type of like tropical setting you could see for this game, perhaps? Or I'm definitely getting tropical vibe just based yeah. on the leaves. The leaves. Yeah, same here. I mean, the leaves look unmistakably tropical. I mean, they, they, they almost look like uh, Donkey Kong Country type leaves. If we didn't know better, this would be straight up a rare game. Like, if they, yeah. someone just released this image, like, oh, that's Rare's next game. And obviously somebody has confidence in this new team because they already have the funding and they uh, would like to work with a publisher if it's mutually beneficial. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like the plan they have set out so far is that the game will initially come out on Steam Early Access and people can play it and get the hang of it and then eventually get it for uh, get it on consoles and of course they are naturally they already said in that Edge interview about the game that they would naturally love to see their game on a Nintendo platform because they've worked with them so, for so long Right. so I'm, I'm glad that they, they do have a uh, console release although I can I can sort of see myself like actually getting I don't do the Steam early access stuff might break that rule for this. Yeah, I, I, I could see myself doing that as well, but I also, I don't know, I might actually, if this does come to Wii U, and they do say that if people tell them to make the Wii U their target console platform, they've got the flexibility to do that. This is really the kind of game that I would like to have be a throwback to that era of gaming, and I don't know, I think I might try to hold out if it does come to the Wii U and just kind of have that old school, you know, kind of 3D platform experience on a Nintendo platform again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be pretty amazing. I just don't know if I'd be able to hold out because I do want to play this yeah. like, as soon as possible. <laughs> just, buy, just buy it twice. Yeah, there we go, <laughs> nah. exactly. I think what's interesting actually to me most is that this game's actually happening. But this, is, this has been teased on Twitter for years now. Um, or actually, there were, it was being teased a couple years ago uh, by one Twitter account. And it's, then the project seemingly died. Someone, I think, asked them or someone involved in the project at some point not too long ago. And it was basically confirmed to be dead. And uh, it seems like it's the same group now that's come back to to finally finish up what they wanted to do originally. Against all odds, it seems like this game is being made. I'm super happy that it is. Really, the, the, uh, the last thing I asked from it is that we get a hilariously just obviously evil villain like Gruntilda who speaks in rhymes and it's just it's so easy to hate but also super lovable oh, like, Gr- Gruntilda is such a great villain and I, I hope that this game can deliver a, uh, a s- similar caliber of villain because she's just I mean she was classic well that was part of the reason why I didn't like Banjo-Tooie because they screwed her up because they took away her rhyming thing 
Oh, they did, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, I remember being disappointed about and that. And that now. took away all the charm I found, actually. Yeah, so. although I did like her sisters. Like, her sisters were pretty funny in Banjo Tooie. They weren't bad, yeah. All right, well, I think that about wraps up for us here. So thanks, guys, for watching. If you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. You can find links to in the description below. It's a good way to keep up to date on everything you post. And of course, keep an eye on GameExplain.com for hopefully more on this game at some point if it actually uh, gets finished, which I hope it does, <laughs> and other things gaming as well. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.